Malik's first job, Financial Principles for Teens, is an excellent resource to get your children started on understanding the basics of financial literacy. This book, which is set in Brownville, Brooklyn, about a young man who gets his first job and then shortly thereafter sits down with his dad to learn how to manage his money. There are several topics that are covered within this work, uh, such as paying yourself first, disciplining your spending, knowing the difference between an asset and a liability, creating multiple sources of income, as well as the importance of being charitable. So again, if you want to get your children started on understanding finance and becoming responsible adults, we highly recommend that you purchase the book, Malik's First Job, Financial Principles for Teens. So please visit maliksfirstjob.com to get more information. Peace. What, is, what would you say would be the best way to get your children interested in investing? Mm -hmm. um, I, I really having like a real conversation with them about it, like more so not being put a lot of pressure on it. Okay. But again, just kind of having that simple conversation with them and not looking at and not teach them that it's a way to like get money, like a get rich quick thing. Right. You know, we're not talking about trading, but teach them like, you know, this you own this is ownership. Malik's first job podcast here to answer any questions that y'all ask. Financial literacy and resources, parents and young people becoming bosses, CEOs, future leaders, entrepreneurs, conferences and boardrooms getting sponsors secured. If you want generational wealth, Brooklyn's own current fill up with information to help. Malik's first job podcast. Malik's Malik podcast. Brooklyn's own current fill up. Current current fill up. Malik's first job podcast, podcast, pod podcast, Brooklyn Zone, Kerwin Phillip, Generation Wealth. Peace, everybody. How you doing? This is Kerwin Phillip here with another episode of Malik's first job podcast. And today we got a special treat for you all. We have my good friend, uh, Joseph Fountain. You know, what's up? What's up? Yeah, what's going on? You know, I, I don't know what Tyler would give him. He said titles kind of limit you. He wants to be free. So <laughs> we're going to let him do his thing. And he, today we're going to talk about um, good money habits parents can have, you know, as far as educating their children about finances. And Joseph, you're a, a very good expert in this field. Um, so first, before we begin, tell people who you are and what you do. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Joseph Fountain. First, thanks for having me on the podcast, bro. Definitely appreciate it. And congrats on your book. Thank um, pretty you. much what I do is um, I'm, I'm a digital marketer. I have a digital marketing business, as well as I help to educate people on, you know, finances, investing, just in a way that anyone can understand it, especially from people who come from, you know, the background of not really having a lot of money. So. Okay. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Yes, what sir. are some... I guess some best practices or just some good things parents can do to help educate their children about finance. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, one, you can actually be more comfortable with talking about finances, you know, with your kids or just being more open around that conversation. Cause you know how we do as parents, right? Stay in a child's place, right? Right. But sometimes when you're talking with your kids or they have different questions or if they're asking or inquiring or they may see something, it's real simple just to be able to like just have a conversation with them like, oh, well, yes, this costs this much. Even if there was like, well, how much money do you make now? Of course, you don't have to tell the world, you know, right. and I know in today's time, people like, you know, you, you can. It's not a big problem. But right. with your kids in particular, it's OK to have those conversations. Right. So you can kind of get used to the conversation around money because the, the, the catch is it's just like with anything. If we were talking about, if you're talking about sex or drugs, and they don't learn from you, they're going to learn from somebody else. Right. <laughs> so you know how that goes, right? So it's like, so you want to be able to have those conversations, which then makes it more comfortable for them to even communicate in that manner by first just being able to just have those conversations, you know, and okay. whether it's a good conversation or maybe it's a tough conversation. Right. Um, another thing you can do, especially a lot of times what people um, what I get a lot of, um, especially if we're like in a youth setting or something okay. where 
you can talk to the kids, but the parents are not present and that can become problematic. So let's say there's a parent who doesn't know anything financially, but they want to teach their kids. Well, then that means it just becomes a thing that you can do with your do it as a family. Like it doesn't have to be that you have to know so much, but as you're learning on that journey, you guys can learn together, right? And you can look up things, Google things, there's activities, there's games. Of course, we know the one of the easiest games to play is Monopoly, you know, right? Yeah. But there's different things out there. And there's even more games being created specifically for family and wealth, especially family and black wealth. And you can easily be able to just start to have those, you know, conversations together as you're getting better. You know, if you are in a place where you're struggling, have those conversations with the kids about why you're trying not to spend money and things like that versus being like, do you got McDonald's money? You know, <laughs> have, you know right. have that conversation. Hey, like, but we're going to eat at home because this works better for our budget, things like that. And just kind of open those lines up. Um, also, um, not to beat the bush with it, but also um, using different um, platforms or different apps that may aid in like helping your kids to learn as well. So a, a good example of one is called Goal Setter. Now, if you haven't heard of Goal Setter, you can check it out. Um, it's actually black owned and mm -hmm. they have a system set up, you know, for parents and kids where they have you know questionnaires parents can a lot allowances to kids and even if kids if they want to be able to do something like you know invest their money or spend money they can have a card they would have to answer like you know like financial questions before um it's a really cool app but there's a lot of um, tools out there that you can look into do your own research and find what works for you and just with those three things and just making it a baseline conversation like for example we always talk about Getting good grades in school, getting your, mm -hmm. your, your, you know, learn your A's and B's. Got to learn how to tie your shoes. You know, got to learn how to. Well, we also have those conversations with finances. I feel like finances should be right in that conversation as well. Just right. as you're learning how to write, read, you okay. should be learning about finances too. Right. So, so I guess you know, a question people ask me all the time as well is how soon should parents have these conversations? I guess at what age should they start mm -hmm. having these financial conversations with their children? Right. So there's a so there's a quote that says a child can learn anything. It just lacks a teacher. So mm -hmm. just like we were just talking about, like, if you can start to teach your kids about the ABCs, right, you also start to teach them little things about money. It might just be simply as, well, this is a dollar. This is twenty five cents. And as they're and when they're younger, of course, as they get older, the information gets a little bit more deeper. But as they're younger, it's just it's just having that, you know, that that C. So the younger they are, if they're like one or two years old, of course, you know, you're not having like, well, you know, you need to get this much percentage, you know, <laughs> you don't need to do, you don't need to talk like that. Right. But just having those light conversations like you would do everything, like we do. You, your kids start to learn how to count one, two, well, you can do the same thing with money. One, right. five, you know, ten, right? right? Um, and just kind of starting at that level of conversation, especially if you have like a piggy bank, um, mm -hmm. being able to sh those those practices, because I know I remember when as a kid and I had a, I didn't have a piggy bank, I had a shoebox. So, you know, we mm -hmm. ran away. It was a shoebox. Right. So. So, you know, putting money in the shoebox and then coming back and putting more money in and seeing you got more. I used to iron mm -hmm. my money because I was I was excited. Oh, wow. but, <laughs> so, oh, you were serious with it right hey real serious bro like you know iron your money like yeah so don't judge nah. me. but just gradually working those conversations in more and more so like i have a i have a seven month old okay of course i'm not talking to him about finances then i have a six then i have a nine then i have a 12 year old so let's say at my 12 year old level i'm talking to him about stuff about like the metaverse about cryptos yeah. um about investing um, about college, you know, because he's he's really into a lot of the uh, computer stuff. Well, right. I, I talked to him about that stuff because that's going to be a part of the life that he's going to live more of than I will. So because right. he's 12 and coming into this stuff, you know, I'm you know, I'm I'm about to be 40 soon. So like right. <laughs> so basically having those conversations with him and saying like, well, why are you looking at this? Google this or let's check this out. And so I do that with him at an older age 
And then right. we also have more in-depth conversations. So it's kind of scales as it goes up. Okay. So, massive, but you know. Yeah. So you, you, you touched on like cryptocurrency and the metaverse. What, what, what are your thoughts on those? So my thoughts on those is um, don't be emotional about it. Um, okay. So those are things that are happening. Now, anytime we have a change or a shift, people typically fight those things because they're like, it's something different. Outside and on, like we got. Remember, touch phone, touch screen. Right. Now yep. tell the truth. When it first came out, you was like, "I'm good," because yeah. I know I didn't want it, no parts of a touch screen at all. Right. But now it's like everything's touch, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, if your computer's not touch, you feel some type of way. So it's like, right. at, at first, things be, they're kind of hard to grasp. Right. But when you see things becoming pretty much etched into a part of your life, is no, is no, there's no need to be emotional about it. It right. is what it is. There's nothing you can do to change it. If they didn't ask you if you was interested or not, those are things that are happening. <laughs> right. So the best thing to do, and like I tell people, at the bare minimum, learn about it so that way, five and ten years from now, right. you're not, you know, having the old folks type of conversations like, mm -hmm. like with the cell phone, like, man, I got this. How, how I turn this thing on, right? You know, right, right. you know, this is this is real money, and it's another another wave. And yes, it's a big change. A lot of digital stuff happening. It has its pros and cons, but it's happening. So it's something that you should at least be, you know, um, knowledgeable on on what's happening because it's going. We're just going to see more and more of it. So you're going to need the information at one one way or the other, if you like it or not. So people who are unfamiliar with the, I know these terms are getting thrown around back and forth. Mm -hmm. So can you explain exactly what the metaverse is for, for oh, someone yeah. who doesn't know what it is? For someone right. who doesn't so, know. So let's say, for example, the metaverse is basically. Like when you've seen those virtual worlds, it's basically a virtual world. So okay. I don't know if people seen Ready Player One or um, it's a it's a it's a new movie that just came out with Ryan Reynolds. I can't think of of the name. Um, Free Guy. It's okay. about a meta a, a metaverse world, right? Like it's just like when people are playing, you know, like Fortnite or Minecraft or Roblox. But look at it from the standpoint now, you know, as you being an avatar. You can put yourself immersed in that world, right, with glasses or even just from the computer, whatever the case is, but being immersed in it, right? Kind of like that, a digital world where you can now attend concerts, pop on some glasses. Like people don't know, like Facebook has a deal with like Ray-Bans. Okay. They're trying to work stuff in with that because right now it's just like a, like a, a stories glasses. Like you can do social media stuff from your glasses, Apple working on some glasses where you could put them on and you can either see your phone and holographic stuff is basically like a another internet so let's say you have the internet the internet is own its own world you have the metaverse its own world and you have companies building within it but it's basically just a virtual um augmented reality world where you can wow. put yourself in it you can now own land people are buying land now hmm. it's where nfts come into place and now you can have digital art everywhere or buying nikes like nikes they're trying to now create like an nft to go along with every shoe so people can't you know make fake right. shoes but they've also so those things are things you can buy within the metaverse right buy houses so you, you might not like your life in the real world <laughs> but then you can go in the metaverse and and have mansions and Right. Or kind of that type of feel, which, you know, that's not necessarily saying it's, you know, a positive, but that's just what it is. Right. Just a whole nother world, but virtually where you can impose yourself and kind of live another life. Kind of like people already do with Facebook anyway. So or right, social media right. anyway. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. And also, okay, another term you just threw out there was NFTs. Can you explain that as well? Or what that is? Or what yeah, those so, are? yeah. So NFTs is, is basically digital art. Um so let's say if you have a baseball card, we know baseball card collectibles. Right. So NFTs are kind of the same. Now with baseball cards, people or basketball cards, any trading cards, people can make copies of those and they're not authentic at all. They can mm -hmm. sell them to you on eBay, Amazon, and you really wouldn't know. Um, so so a lot of times people say, well, NFTs, digital art, like why am I paying for a picture when I can copy it? It's the same thing. So mm -hmm. the copy is not you know worth as much as the original. So NFT is based on digital art. Doesn't mean it has to be still art. It can be animation. Okay. But with NFTs, um, people have now explored vast 
worlds with it. Like, for example, Nas is releasing his album and he's having NFTs attached to it where people can kind of buy shares of royalties of his album, starting at like $50 or whatnot. So you're seeing music artists start to do this with music and have the digital, the NFT portion with it, with purchasing music, which is tied into royalties and things like that. Now they're making money on the front end, of course, um, yeah. but you just see that, you know, they're starting to use those things as, as a way of kind of almost like minting their music as well. So wow. just think of this last like a, a, a digital baseball card or a digital basketball card, just like for starters to kind of think about it because there's it, it expands. Like I said, you can have animations, okay, you know, things like that. And you have to buy it with like cryptocurrency, you know, currently, um, you know, through Ethereum and on the blockchain. So wow, wow, okay. As a busy entrepreneur and business owner, do you find yourself overwhelmed with day-to-day -day tasks? InnerVision Consulting provides virtual assistant services to entrepreneurs, coaches, and nonprofit organizations, taking on those everyday tasks while leaving you time to focus on the things you love, being more productive, and having more flexibility and freedom. Put yourself and your business first. Visit innervisionllc.com or call 804-420-2306 to schedule a free consultation today and learn more about how InterVision Consulting can support you in taking your business to the next level. Well, it's going to get real complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you got to learn now. you got to learn now, so you got to try to catch up. <laughs> right, right, right. So I know we kind of went off on a tangent a bit, and we mm -hmm. were talking about, like, just some basic concepts for uh, for parents and kids. Um, so I know you mentioned some platforms that parents can use to help educate mm -hmm. their children about finance. What are those? What are some of those platforms um, that, that you were speaking of? Right. So you have Goal Setter. That's kind of mm -hmm. a newer one. A lot of people have not maybe heard of, but it's pretty good. Goal Setter. You have Stockpile. Stockpile um, actually has it set up where you know your kids. So like my kids have a Stockpile account too. It's underneath you know the parents' account. Right. And on the screen, they just have pictures that they identify with. So um, a few, maybe three Christmases ago, I, I created a wish list and I let them pick the stocks that they want. So okay. they pick the stocks that they want. And when family members were asking what, what could they get them for Christmas, we said nothing, but you can donate to their wish list. And then they send them that and we send them that link and they can choose to put $5, a dollar, a hundred dollars in each stock that they personally picked which of course it's correlated with pictures you know so like okay. so so all three of them they got apple products so of course they they apple was one they saw they okay. you know my my youngest one of my youngest saw mickey mouse was like oh yeah i want mickey so kind of identify so stockpile's another one um you also have acorns acorns early they have a good uh kids program um you know with family and kids where you can you know pretty much invest you know on a regular basis into your kids future um, mm -hmm. Charles Schwab, and just about any company, uh, any brokerage out there, most of them, not all, but most of them, especially the big ones, the more financial institution ones like TD Ameritrade, uh, TD Ameritrade, Trade, Charles Schwab, um, E-Trade, e Fidelity, Vanguard, they have like, um, you know, college IRAs, you know, IRAs for youth, where mm -hmm. you can actually put money in and invest for them. Um, so a lot of platforms have it, but those you know, first three that I mentioned, they specifically work for kids as well as um, Stash app as well. Okay. Stash apps has a, a a part for, you know, youth as well that works pretty cool on their app as well. So okay. so what is what would you say would be the best way to get your children interested in investing? Mm -hmm. um, I, I really having like a real conversation with them about it, like more so not being put a lot of pressure on it. Okay. But again, just kind of having that simple conversation with them and not looking at and not teach them that it's a way to like get money, like a get rich quick thing. Right. You know, we're not talking about trading, but teach them like, you know, this you own this is ownership. This right. is this is ownership. You know, if you want to be able to do this or like sometimes with um, especially my daughter, we'll talk about different things Um and we're like, well, if you ever want to be able to get to this point in life, you know, and 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 not have to worry about this, these are the things that you do, right. just like we do with everything else. You know, you got to brush your teeth. Right. You know, you got you got you got older kids, so you know the boys. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, 
You got hey, you got to comb your hair, man. Keep your shoes. Right. You got to take it, boy. Take a shower. So right. Right. it's kind of the same lines. We're just saying these are part of these are things that you do, but not making it seem like it's you know super hard or anything. Right. But just keeping having a just general simple conversation here and there, giving them examples. Hey, since you you know you now have a dollar in Apple, you know you now own a piece of Apple. Technically, right. that's part of your company. Like legally, for real, you own a piece of the company. Right. But just kind of having that soft conversation with them about it, and and just like how money can grow and how you right. want that to happen. Um, just 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 real simple, real soft. Nothing hardcore, hard nose, but just right. simple conversations. And 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 what happens is, just like they're hearing everything else about. Make sure you do your homework. Make sure you it it becomes a part of their, you know, their conversation, right? Um, because we know finance financial stuff can be very, in a sense, boring to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. That's why people love to hop on cryptos and trading because it has a excitement level of like right. bam, 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 bam. A lot of hype that can come with it. So right. so you know, just keeping that simple conversation. Yeah. And you can use those things as well as, you know, to help, like, if, if you wanted your kids to play with crypto, um, of course, mm -hmm. they can't have, like, a account. I know with Cash App, they have, like, um, yeah, the uh, uh, something you can do for your kids, you know, with crypto. But, right. you know, but, you know, being able to just show them, like, one of my friends, um, they invested in, this is not financial advice. <laughs> okay. But, Disclaimer. Um, Right, disclaimer. Now her kids watch all that stuff, and they and and her kids were telling her that she need to get in Shiba Inu. She get in Shiba Inu, and mm -hmm. so she did it for them. And you know, she did it for them and say, "Hey, this account is yours." And once things have turned up like it has, they've been enjoying seeing the you know the growth. Wow. So, you know, you you yeah. you know your kids better than anybody. So you kind of mm -hmm. find those points and angles based off their interests to be able to talk to them, but just keeping it very simple. You know, not not being hard nose about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I just had a conversation with my son, and we was talking about like I was showing him like the difference, like how you could grow your money over the years. Mm -hmm. Like I said, okay, if you take ten dollars, you put up on your mattress, in ten years you'll have ten dollars. <laughs> you can right. put ten dollars, put in a savings account for ten years, and this is what you'll have after. You know, the savings mm -hmm. interest rate. Right. It's real low. So this show the comparison. Then also I say, well, if you if you invested in stocks, right, on average, you know, this is what the rate of return would be. And within those 10 years, this is what you would have in those 10 years based on the average. Right. right. Yeah. Um, that's, and that's also true. compare it against the rate of inflation. Right? right. Because you know, you can use stocks to kind of hedge over, you know, give you a little leverage over the inflation rate. And exactly. just kind of show them those comparisons and how the money, you know, mm -hmm. how the money compares against e each one of those. It right. kind of shows them the difference and what the, what the advantages are to investing. Right. And, and um, you know, I got my kids started as well. And again, this, just like you did, um, companies that they're already using and they're familiar with, mm -hmm. right? Because like my sons are big, both of them are big Nike heads. So right. I mean, you know, instead of just putting two or three hundred towards a pair of shoes, when I buy a couple of shares of stock, mm -hmm. right? So as your friends are going out buying and you see your friends camped out in front of the store when a new release comes out, you know that, okay, I'm going to get a piece of that. Right. Right. Because right. it kind of changes your mentality and how you look at things. Right. Yeah. So if you kind of get them started young with that, I think they'll have a bright future because they'll start looking and viewing the world quite differently than everybody else. Right, exactly. That's it, just changing the views. We have those tough conversations at the dinner table, you know, yeah. of what's real. Um, right. And yes, you know, they're, yeah, they're in school, but just having those those conversations about what's real and what how things really, really work, um, right. just so that they're getting those seeds. Not trying to be, you know, overbearing, but talking and teaching them, you know, so they could get, right. So they can really learn and kind of understand and see things differently. And then, you know, maybe show them different examples um, with other kids they're doing as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely have those conversations. Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. Um, so then we kind of touched on investing. So what other things can parents do 
to kind of give their kids the edge on understanding finances. Right. I'm um, just being honest, you know, just really being honest about it. So okay. we know, we know that certain things don't work for us, right? We know okay. that, right? You know, we know certain things that it's, it's a big, you know, advertisement got a looks great on the outside, but it's not as, you know, it seems. So we know right. those things. So if we know those things, we don't have to jump on the bandwagon, like, you know, society says, and teach those things. If we know it's not working, we can talk to them and teach them differently, you know, and just being honest about our experiences and how things that we know and how things work, you know? Um, mm -hmm. If you're working a job that you don't like and you you wish you had did this, that, and the other, you can talk to them about those things. I know my mom used to do that a lot, especially like, um, like one of the one of the the very big transitional pieces in my life was my mom taking me and my sister to Walmart, um, where she's like, I can only get y'all one thing for Christmas. Just, just you know, I just it's been rough. Right. But then she took us to look at lights and you know, and communities where there are mansions. You know, from you know around the way from Northside Highland Park. Right. I never seen houses like that in person. So. I'm in middle school wondering like, yo, like, how do people get that? Now, yeah. I know how people get it on the block because that was what you saw every day. Right. And then I played sports also because I knew that's how people get it as well. Like, so mm -hmm. I'm like, some go work. But when she, <laughs> when she saw the houses, it just made me, I was just like, man, so how do people afford to live that? Right. So, if, so just giving that exposure to your kids with just communication, um, you know, speaking with just just being honest and just encouraging them, you know, um, if there's something that they're really, really interested in, instead of us kind of, well, you don't need to be worried about that. We live in a different day now. We live in a totally different day now where a lot of those things that we, you know, you would say, oh, you don't need to worry about are the things that are making the most money. But being able to support them in those things they're interested in, first off, to kind of make sure that it's a it's a good relationship. So that we're not just talking at them. And that kind of opens the door if you be able to have a good conversation with them about stuff. Yeah. And like I said, it doesn't have to be something that's you're doing eight hours a day, but it can just be, you know, 20 minutes here, an hour there. But but it's but you have to be consistent. Yeah. And so just being open, honest, sharing real experiences, um, introducing them to things that you think would be helpful in that, you know, especially if you know them or they're interested in. Especially yeah. YouTube, Google, you can find something along the lines to kind of, you know, even help with that message. But, you know, just yeah. keeping them exposed to it, keeping it a, a, a normal conversation in the house and, and just, you know, keeping it simple. And then as you elevate, you know, let them know. So, yeah. OK, so I know you have like several platforms where you teach this stuff online. Do you want to share some of that with the uh, with the audience? Sure. Um, YouTube. I have YouTube on YouTube. I am Get Smart University, um, but pretty much on every other platform. I am Joseph L. Fountain. You know, no spaces. Um, you can catch me on Instagram. You catch me on TikTok. I'm talking and doing, you know, funny skits. I love TikTok. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Joseph L. Fountain um, on all platforms and on YouTube, um, Get Smart University. Okay. Okay. Great. 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 All right, so definitely um, follow, you know, Joseph on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, also TikTok. And what's the, what's the TikTok handle? It's Joseph L. Fountain on right. TikTok. So, yes, you yes. Taking TikTok. TikTok. You on TikTok, man? Me? Nah, I haven't, 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 haven't jumped on there quite yet. <laughs> this was a uh, jump on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jump on it? Yeah, just, just jump on. It, it's, it's great. I wish I had when I was 10. Or twelve or fifteen, you know. So well, it was it didn't exist back then, though. So you nah, know. Nah, nah, none of this did. No. Right, right, right. But yo, thank you, Joseph. Man, it was a I pleasure having you. you on. You know, and I'm sure you know we'll bring bring you back on again to kind of discuss further. You know, um, as this metaverse grows, you know, right. we're gonna be like Spider Man, right? You know, with these dual realities and these different universes going on. It's, right. It's, 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 it's be quite interesting. Be quite interesting. It will be. It will be. I look forward to it. I look forward to it though. So yeah. it's a, it's another wealth trend that we haven't seen. Just a whole nother level. It goes up, goes up, goes up. So right, right, right. 
So cool. So again, thanks again for coming on. This is Malik's First Job.com, the Malik's First Job podcast. And we'll catch you all next time. Peace. Malik's First Job podcast, podcast, pod, podcast, Brooklyn Zone, Kerwin Phillip. Generation, Generation Wealth. wealth, wealth.